Hello, kings and queens. E. Ray Taronic here, master weaver of mystery suspense thrillers, as well as broadcaster of astrology. First, I'd like to thank you for being here with me today, lending me your ears, your eyes, and your time. I know it is valuable. Therefore, I will be sharing valuable information with you that will help you to navigate the week's upcoming challenges, take advantage of the opportunities and assistance aspecting you, and even be able to look forward to the blessings coming your way. Now, I would love for you to help me to celebrate my birthday month by purchasing and reviewing my newest psychological thriller, Deadliest Intuition. If you like a thriller, it would definitely be a an honor to have you read and review mine. Um, and that would be a great birthday gift to see what you guys think. Now, Mentor Chatter Musings is spotlighting and honoring none other than author and creative artisan Latoya Chandler. Latoya Chandler is not only a brilliant writer, but she is a brilliant creator in general. Her products are unmatched, and I am a consumer of her, so I can attest to this. If you stop on by treasuresandspoils.com, you'll see just what I'm talking about. Her candle line, her crystals. I mean, everything is just um, really exquisite. So I will be spotlighting her this month, going over her creations, um, her novels and things like that. So if you'd love to pick one up, you can stop by my page and definitely see the different ads and promotions for LaToya Chandler. Don't hesitate to stop by Diverse Shelves on Clubhouse. On Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can join the discussion to highlight new releases and find out about new releases that are coming out. I will definitely be there on Tuesday. Um, I quite enjoy the group, so don't hesitate to stop by Diverse Shelves on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I see you reading and chatting on Facebook. Always has Freestyle Fridays on Friday. If you'd like to participate as an artist, don't hesitate to contact Ebony Evans. She's the president of ICU Reading and Chatting Book Club. On Thursday, you can check out Diamonds World because they will be back at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with author Aubrey Penn discussing her series Indigo Haze. I believe they're going through books two and two through four. So if you've read this series, don't hesitate to join the discussion. Diane and Aubrey would love to see you there. Last but not least, be sure to check out the Intentional Life Club on Instagram. They have moved uh, the platform on Clubhouse uh, on a regular basis to Instagram. So don't hesitate to get with LaGio Hunt and the crew on the Intentional Life Morning Show if you intend to live an intentional life. <laughs> Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy your astrology and the tarot portion of your weekly reading. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It lets me know that you appreciate the content that I'm putting out. Hello, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign people. e -Ray Taronic here with your astrology portion of your reading for the week of October 31st. Now, this is going to be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I've already attached the tarot portion from last week, just in case you need to hear that again to give you more clarity. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. It lets me know you appreciate the content that I'm putting out. Now, on November the 4th, the sun is in Scorpio at 12 degrees. And this says that this could be a day where money is is able to be made, but you may have to do it alone. Okay. This is a day of wanting to be in your solitude, though others are vying for your attention. Okay. Travel could be on the menu as well. Now, remember this day on this day, this is the same day of the new moon. 
Okay, and even the next day, Mercury is coming in and Mercury is uh, the communication is going to be all about your relationships. So I want to talk about not only what's happening on Thursday, but what's happening because of the new moon aspects for the next two weeks and what Mercury is bringing into you. Okay, for the next month, because of Mercury moving into Scorpio tomorrow on Friday. OK, so let's talk about all of that coupled in with this Thursday aspect. OK, but just do know uh, the things that I'm talking about are going to last for the next couple of weeks into the next month. OK, now you could be making money, like I said, in your solitude while others are vying for your attention and things like that. You're going to have money opportunities communicated to you. You're going to have uh, you, people in your relationships are going to be communicating with you. And because of them communicating with you, they're going to lend you opportunities to uh, speak your truth, to expand your message, to uh, partner with you in whatever your skill is in, in your education or in your craft. You know, people are going to be out offering to partner up with you. And things like that. People at a distance from you want to start relationships with you, whether they're romantic relationships, creative relationships to hang out or even your children communicating with you, even from afar, especially if they're in school and things like that. So all of those opportunities are aspecting you for that that time. Now, you're going to feel this Mercury aspect and this communication coming in right off the rip if you have any placements between zero and three degrees. OK, now this new moon, though, is between is at 12 degrees. So if you have any placements between nine or 15 degrees, that's when you're going to feel those energies of that that new moon. OK, right off the rip. And you should be feeling it right now already. You know, those moons are powerful. Now, um, let's see the. Blessings that are going to be coming in through your relationships are going to have to do with. Um, siblings, short distance travel, your networks of people, uh, I'd say neighbors and things like that. They're going to bring in blessings to you. They're going to be helping you to accomplish goals. They're going to be helping you to expand your reach with other friends and things like that and, and, and dive into other social groups. Those things are going to be communicated to you. So you might find yourself riding around in this hood and then riding around in that neighborhood then riding around in that neighborhood, depending on what's going on, because you're meeting different people. You know, you're not ne you're networking. OK, you also have uh, the friction that you're going to have in, co in communication and things like that. And maybe blockages to your opportunities are going to be in career and in home and family. Some of your relationships in career are not going to be vibing with you or liking what you what you're doing and bringing to the table. But you have Jupiter there, so I wouldn't worry about it because luck is there. But your area of Leo, that's squaring where home and family is. You have a relationship at home and family where somebody is just not vibing with you. OK, it could be a Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising sign person, or it could just be, you know, someone in, in home and family. So just be mindful of that, you know, because it could be a trying day, especially if you're supposed to be spending time with somebody and you're not and you're working in your solitude too much, then they're going to have a problem with you and want to argue and probably fight with you and things like that, especially if you have placements between nine and 15 degrees of Taurus or Scorpio. You want to be very mindful of that and watch out for that, for that maybe a shocking conversation will come your way and you might find yourself by yourself or you could find yourself working really hard in your solitude. Now, the new moon in Scorpio will square Saturn and Aquarius at seven degrees. So a restriction or responsibility is going to be placed on you in the area of relationships. And the restriction or responsibility is going to have to do with career or whatever it is that you master. So if you have placements between 14, no, between four and 10 degrees of Aquarius or Scorpio, you can kind of expect something to kind of be hindering you from accomplishing a goal, maybe jealousy, money motives, uh, non-trust issues, sometimes of restrictions are are there so you want to work those out if you've been neglecting somebody talk to them spend some time with them with them so they can stop tripping okay <laughs> just just be mindful of not neglecting anyone you know because they might illuminate something to you about yourself you know what they don't like or you know a, a shock could be coming to you 
Now, on Friday, you know, we already talked about uh, Mercury moving into Scorpio on Friday. But let's talk about the other transits that are going down on Friday. The sun in Scorpio at 13 degrees is really prompting you uh, not to tell anyone your business because you could be taken advantage of, particularly if you have any placements between 10 and 16 degrees of Scorpio, Leo, or Aquarius. Now, these could be relationships taking advantage of you in home and family, relationships taking advantage of you in career, or whatever it is you master. Make sure you're taking care of your health as well because you could get some bad news about about someone you have a relationship with in home and family or career about their health or even yours. Okay, so just be mindful of that. Now, you also could dream up something that's a blessing in the early morning hours with Neptune and Pisces trining the moon in Scorpio at 20 degrees. Whatever was blocking you before is going to be released, okay? Especially if it has to do with your, your talents and things like that and gifts and abilities. Now, if it was your own laziness or inaction, you could be getting up and, get, and putting things into play now, okay? Especially with Mercury, the planet of, of skills and uh, communication moving into Scorpio, that area for you of relationships, okay? It's prompting you guys to start communicating about the goals you want to accomplish. Your friends helping you accomplish goals and, and bringing you blessings. You meeting new people that become your friends that bring you blessings. If you have placements between 17 and 23 degrees of Pisces or Scorpio, you can expect this lazy or an action to go away for you. Now, the moon in Scorpio on Friday is going to square Jupiter and Sagittarius at 22 degrees. So if you have placements between 19 and 25 degrees, an issue could crop up over rivalries, but then there's some type of assistant or opportunity that's going to aspect because those two areas of Scorpio and career always square each other. Your relationships and you and your relationships and career seem to always somehow square each other or there's some issue where you got a lot of put a lot of energy in there. Now Jupiter's there and it's easing that a little bit by lending you some type of opportunity or assistance, some lucky opportunity or assistance. So if you have placements between 19 and 25 degrees of Scorpio or Aquarius, that's aspecting for you. Now around 1 p.m. in the morning, or uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm sorry, the moon in Vesta in Scorpio is at 24 degrees and it's going to sextile Pluto and Capricorn. So your devotion to whatever it is you master calls for your assistance. Um, or uh, it, it lends you some type of opportunity because of your devotion to a, a particular relationship, okay? And that particular relationship is going to bring in for you some sort of opportunity to speak your truth, showcase your education and skills. You might even have to travel to someone at a distance from you or deal with someone at a distance from you for the opportunity. And this would be where you're, you're, you've are you're been continuously helping others, maybe even with your education where you've had to brave dangerous situations or just courageous situations, even speaking up you know, for yourself. And now people see that in you and they want to help you to go ahead and transform that area of long distance travel, education and skills, what you think and preach. Now, Venus is going to enter Capricorn at zero degree. So use your intuition and your insight on that day as to whatever is being brought to your attention on Friday. It's not only going to affect you on Friday, though. With Venus coming there for the next 30 days, starting November the 5th, Capricorn, your area of Capricorn, which for you is actually long distance travel, education and skills, what you think and preach. Venus is coming there to usher in money so you can make money with people at a distance from you. You can communicate uh, your love language with people at a distance from you. Your love language and your skills get better. You know, your partner, there's more passion in your relationship. You have more pleasurable times driving long distances or dealing with someone um, who is at a distance from you or even showcasing your education and skills, making money and having a good time. Just remember if you're in a monogamous, monis, a monogamous relationship that you be conscious of that and you don't um, mess that up because you'll have that opportunity because, you know, you're, people, you're going to be speaking people's love language, basically. Okay. Let's talk about what's going to be going on, not only on the fifth. If you have any placements in Capricorn between zero and three degrees or any of the other signs that I name, you're going to feel this immediately on the fifth. But 
uh, even if you actually have placements in, I would say, Libra at 29 degrees. But let's talk about what you're going to feel. The others who will feel it eventually are the later degrees. Once the, once the planet gets within three degrees of your degree, you'll start feeling that Venus goodness coming into you. So for the next 30 days, starting on the 5th, you will have opportunities to expand your message because your friends and social groups are going to be helping you accomplish goals, expand your reach, put your message out there, speak your truth, form relationships with you, new friends, new goals that have to do with your education and skills, and even opportunities to travel with friends. You're also going to have uh, blessings coming into you, directly to you, shocking blessings to you and your romantic partner or because of your romantic partner, to you and your child or because of your child, to you and your creative endeavors or blessings coming to you because of your creative endeavors or even while you're out having fun. And they're all coming because of what you think and preach. You have that love language going on, okay? Now, your friction is going to be because of what you think and preach behind the scenes, secret sacrifice, solitude, people gossiping about you and things like that. I wouldn't worry too much about that because Aries is there and Chiron is an Aries. So it's healing that area of secret sacrifice and solitude. So whatever you work for in your solitude is healing your your um, technically your Pluto because Pluto is in Capricorn. So it's healing your transformation as to your education and skills, what you think and preach. You're probably working in your solitude really hard, but it's helping you to develop your skills better. Okay. Uh, even though people are talking about you behind your back at a distance from you and even at work, um, you know, maybe you're getting even have, having to work on your health. You could get bad news about health or have to work on your health or travel uh, a long distance to a doctor for your health, um, your day or even a pet. Uh, you see your daily routines. You could have some delays and things like that or, or little tips and arguments with people at work during your daily routines. So just be mindful of that because you don't have any any benefic planets in Libra to offset, you know, any uh, to, to offset that square. OK, so be mindful of that as well. But this looks really good for you to be, you know, expanding your message, getting your reach out, forming new relationships and things like that. And, and having blessing blessings come to you, your romantic partner and your child, even through your creative endeavors. OK, for the next 30 days, starting on November 5th. Now, let's talk about Saturday on Saturday, the 6th. Uh, the sun is in Scorpio at 14 degrees, and it says that this is a day that you're prompted not to play the blame game or the victim role. You want to learn and retain your lessons so you don't make the same mistakes again. You also want to avoid following or copying other people's work. Don't take the easy way out. You know, plagiarism really lurks on that day. So if you have to get any, if you're showing any work, make sure you get copyrights. Uh, you don't want anybody taking anything from you. Now, this is your area of relationships. So for you, you might want to might not want to take the easy way out with your relationships or play the victim role. You know, how some people will are really good at reverse psychology and stuff like that and switching things over on people. Make sure that you're not doing that to someone else. If you have placements between 11 and 17 degrees of Scorpio, this is something that you're going to want to watch out for, even if you have those placements in Taurus, because it directly aspects you. You know, you could be doing these things. So be mindful of that. The moon in Sagittarius at seven degrees will sextile Saturn and Aquarius at seven degrees. If you have placements between four and 10 degrees of Sagittarius or Aquarius, you can expect some type of assistance or opportunity to be granted to you, but it's going to put a restriction on you. It's going to place some type of responsibility on you with this opportunity or assistance. And it's going to have to do with your career. Okay. Not only your career, but it's going to have to do with uh, let's see, uh, share finances, endings, new beginnings, things you're passionate about, and even sex and intimacy. Now, listen to this. Now, the aspects, I don't really like the aspects because this is a decision that it could been, have been cut off or ignored. And it, and it, you know, it could place a restriction on you. You want to ask yourself, could I get locked up? Could I get sick? Could I be in my solitude? What responsibilities are going to weigh on me? Ask yourself before the offer is accepted because the way the energy is on Saturday is kind of wonky. So it's like it's offering you something that might not necessarily be all good, especially if, okay, especially with the next angle, 
I'm going to read the next angle to you and then we're going to talk about it a bit more. So Sagittarius, the moon in Sagittarius will try and Chiron and Aries at nine degrees, bringing a blessing of healing to your area of shared finances, endings, new beginnings, sex and intimacy. Um, and things that you're passionate about. But there's also going to be a sextile to your area of money and resources. So you're you're nurturing the area of money and resources. But there's an opposition to the moon. So it's an opposition to the south node. So if, if it's at opposition to the south node and this aspect in the south node, something is in the mix where there's like greed, uh, somebody lying to you about money, somebody trying to shortchange you, maybe somebody giving you some counterfeit money. Just trying to cheat you. Look at every side of the coin here because there's something up. There's healing coming in where you've been courageous, but it could be short lived and turn into catastrophic losses, especially if you have placements between six and 12 degrees of Sagittarius, Aries, and Gemini. Okay. You know, don't let those passions get the best of you, whether it's about money or sex. Be very mindful of that. All right. If you want to take that opportunity or not. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Okay. God bless you guys. The tarot portion is coming up next. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Bye now. Hello, Taurus. Some on rising sign people. Eray Tarana here with the tarot portion of your reading for the week of October 31st. Please don't hesitate to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It lets me know that you appreciate the content that I'm putting out. Now, your week is permeated by the Nine of Wands. And the Nine of Wands talks about some type of test of faith, some perseverance that you're having to go through. The guy on the card is bandaged, bandaged up on the head and the arm, and he's been through it. He's got eight wands behind him and one in his hand. So he's been fighting some battles and winning, but he's still being asked to persevere. That is what your week is talking about for you. You're being, you're persevering through what every obstacle this week okay now are you being asked to you you are doing it. that's what you're doing now as far as you got some choices at your disposal some a lot of options that you can go for but you're being a little too fanciful about your options now this is either about a home or a business because you got the three of pentacles and the three of pentacles talks about um it, it's about creativity and teamwork too um, uh, you might be rising in the ranks among your peers. Um, and, and you've got a lot of options at your disposal. Okay. Maybe somebody's coming to you with a bunch of options as, as to where you can, uh, move up and be an authority or rise in status amongst your peers. And with this rise in status, it'll bring you to the queen of pentacles. It'll bring you some stability in finances. It will bring you um, some type of success or, yes, stability in finances, some type of security. It's a, a positive card predicting happiness. But make sure you're not being too fanciful about all of the options that you have, have at your disposal because that's what it talks about. You know, that seven of pentacles talks about fantasy sometimes. So maybe you're, you know you know, being a little too fanciful about everything and you need to get a little more grounded as it pertains to that. There's some type of decision that it is, is there's peace within a relationship right now because of a decision where you've been moving forward towards your happy family. Okay. But there's still, um, like choices or decisions to be made because it's the two of swords and the two of swords talks about you know, a decision being made, a choice, a stalemate, a truce, maybe, you know, through indecision. Like the decision is not made yet. I still got to keep plotting forward towards my happy family. So I'm going to keep with the routine and do what I got to do to keep this stuff going. Okay. Because there is some type of, uh, there is some type of, uh, you know, peace restored. You know, uh, th this could be a troublesome partnership and there's some type of momentary calm coming in. Um, and, and now you're just continuing to plot forward towards what's going to make you happy. Now, you are attempting to have some type of progress. You're attempting to plan for the future and make some type of decisions. But as you do that, you need to make sure that you're vested in your own interests. You need to make sure that you are 
you know, doing what is best for you, even as it pertains to, you know, financial security and stability and things like that. You seem to have someone rushing in towards you passionately. Uh, and this could be a fire sign person, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, um, because it's the Knight of Wands. And the Knight of Wands is somebody who's very passionate, you know, and, and they do, they do forge toward what they want passionately. They are, you know, a person that's very enthusiastic. They like action and adventure and success. Okay. Things could be speeding up as you are vested in your own interest in planning, but, and you can have this person coming in, bringing you, uh, coming towards you with more to offer. Um, but remember, this is a Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands typically comes in and out. So you have to be, you know, ready to withstand that. You know, it's like an alley cat comes in, eats. Two days later, they're going off the porch. You don't see him again for another month. You know, um, whether this is a project or a person starting to materialize, look forward with determination because things are going to start speeding up, okay? Just make sure you keep your wits about you and don't be too fanciful as to your options. Now, your challenges and advice is permeated by the fool card. This is about a new journey that you're going on, something new that you're starting because you're the fool in this, okay? And with you being the fool in this, the challenge is you getting more information as to where to go. You know, you want to move forward. You want to plot forward with, with this routine efficiency, you know, but more is being revealed in what's offered what more you're wanting more to be revealed about this creative offer or creative partnership or even this love situation and you it's hard for you to move forward when you feel like you are waiting for more information about what to do and where to go the advice is to take the practical advice from a imp from a mentor but at the same time make sure that you research and keep your wits about you in the situation because you're hoping, you know, it's prompting you to hope for the best that your wish fulfillment is going to come in and to keep watering the ground around you. Keep nurture, nur nourishing and nurturing your projects and the things around you for this wish fulfillment to come in. But when the news comes to you this week, just make sure you keep your wits about you about the situation and you research anything that's told to you. Because it's practical advice, but it's it's not giving you everything. It's not telling you everything. Something is still being held back from you. Okay? God bless you. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. I'll see you guys next week. Bye now, Taurus.